Hey there everybody, it's Mark Crowley. I'm back with another video. Today I'm continuing my series uh, on the creative process and storytelling, giving all of my best advice on a variety of subjects. Today we're going to be talking about the premise of a story and giving you uh, tips on coming up with a premise and sort of helping you understand what a premise is. Uh, and as I talk about that, I'm going to be working on a, a sort of chibi version of this scene from uh, my graphic novel Brody's Ghost, uh, in which uh, Brody, the main character, meets Talia, the ghost, for the first time, uh, and in a way establishes uh, the premise of this particular tale. Now, uh, before I get any farther, I'm going to just jump in with number one here to start defining what a premise is. Uh, the premise is the kernel of an idea that could be used to tell a variety of stories. It's a kind of launching pad for a story. Uh, and uh, so I guess I can use uh, uh, Brody's Ghost here as an example. I suppose the premise of uh, Brody's Ghost would be uh, this idea of a young man finding that he has the ability to see ghosts uh, uh, and having his whole world sort of turned upside down by one particular uh, teenage ghost who comes into his life. Uh, and drags him into the pursuit of a serial killer. Okay, so that's that's my sort of summary of the of the basic premise uh, of Brody's Ghost. And you know, within I'd say the first 20, 30, 40 pages of the story, uh, the reader understands. Okay, this is what this story is going to be about. Uh, it's a little bit of a tricky thing to differentiate between a story idea and a premise. Uh, let's move on to the second one because I think it uh, will help clarify. Uh, the premise can often be summarized in a what-if question. Anytime you find yourself wondering what would happen if, you may well have something that could be used as a story premise. Um, so, you know, just in your daily life, uh, you may find yourself kind of uh, encountering situations and uh, beginning to wonder uh, how would things go down <laughs> If that guy sitting across from me, uh, you know, uh, at the uh, airplane terminal is uh, secretly a criminal or something, and what if I, uh, you know, I became convinced that he was a criminal and I decided to uh, follow him around and whatever, you know, this sort of thing might sort of pop into your head uh, as just sort of a, you know, how, how would that proceed? You know, what would that lead me to? Anything like that, any simple idea like that that pops into your brain, that could be the premise for a story. Sort of, you sort of feel like, yeah, that could launch me. I don't know where it's going to lead, but I uh, feel that that could be the beginnings of a story. And uh, so, yeah, you got to, in a way, to come up with a good story premise, the first step is to have your an antenna up, in a way, and notice when an idea like that occurs to you. Uh, and, uh, you know, people with curious minds are kind of wondering stuff like that all the time. Uh, so, yeah, I'd say stay alert uh, to your, your own little ideas that pop into your head throughout the day, because you never know how many of them can be turned into the premise of a story. Number three here, writers often get their premise ideas from a real-life situation, one from their own lives or one they read about somewhere. Uh, so, uh, indeed, I know a lot of uh, authors will get their idea from some sort of uh, newspaper article. I was listening to a podcast in which uh, the creator of Breaking Bad was trying to get back to where he first uh, got the idea. Uh, and I think he had read some article about a person in an apartment complex, maybe, uh, and, and the police had busted them and found out that they were actually cooking meth. Okay, now, that that was just a, a kind of a sadly everyday occurrence, probably, but it must have grabbed his attention, and he thought, wow, a person could be secretly carrying out criminal activity, Um while no one, you know, everyone nearby just thinks that they're an ordinary person. And you can kind of see where uh, he might have leapt from that to, well, what would happen if a completely ordinary, seemingly good guy gradually, you know, entered the world of crime? You know, and that's basically how he created that incredibly successful and endlessly fascinating uh, story. So it started for him with a, a news article. So if you're uh, lacking for story ideas, maybe it's time to start reading <laughs> more news articles about 
uh, things that are happening in the world, and uh, you never know how many. Or in, a, indeed, as I said, something from your own life. You know, there may be some dramatic event in your own life uh, that could be turned in. And it doesn't have to be exactly like the finished story. It just sort of gets your brain churning a little bit. Uh, uh, to start building uh, a story out from that. Sometimes kind of reverse engineering a story that allows you uh, to get into this subject that you're uh, fascinated by. Let's move on to number four. The premise should be about the day something unusual happened. No one wants to read about the day everything stayed the same. Uh, so at the heart of almost any uh, good premise is um, some break with uh, the everyday. Uh, and in a way there's this two-part process of uh, creating what is the everyday uh, life of this uh, person or people that you are going to be your main characters. You set that up and then the premise kicks in, as I said here with Brody, when something unusual happens. And I, you know, basically I uh, start the story as close to when the unusual thing happens as I can. Uh, some people will indeed, right from the very first page, throw you right into the unusual event. I wanted to do that, actually, with Brody's Ghost. I wanted to start with this scene, but I felt, no, we need to get to know Brody a little bit more. And that's why there are about, I would say, 20 pages maybe leading up to this moment. So we at least have some sense of what everyday life was sort of like for him before the unusual thing happened. But if, if you're telling a story in which nothing unusual happens, uh, I would say you're in trouble f in, uh, for uh, grabbing the reader, certainly. People just are not normally interested uh, in uh, the day that everything stayed the same. Let's move on now to number five. The difference between a good premise and a great one is that the great premise is highly original and inherently interesting. Um, I uh, always use, uh, and I know I've used as an example before in previous uh, videos, uh, the idea of Groundhog Day as a really great premise. And when it first came out, this idea of, you know, what if, what if you woke up and you were going through the same day over and over again? What would that be like? You know, that is, I think, an inherently interesting idea. And uh, it, it was, at the time, highly original. Since then, I think a lot of people have imitated it and used it in uh, various ways. Um, and, you know, it's a high bar to clear. I don't know if I've ever come up with a hugely original premise. You know, a person seeing a ghost is... Um, arguably not a one-of-a-kind uh, premise. It's been done before, but then you get into the details of it and it's you know, it's not going to be done the way that I've done it exactly, right? So you're, you're putting your own spin on a tried-and-true uh, premise. Uh, even something like, you know, a, a great uh, play like Romeo and Juliet, you know, is based on the premise of two people falling in love that come from uh, different families that oppose the idea of them being in love. It's not a wildly original premise, and I, don't, I, I would think it wasn't even in the days of Shakespeare, but since he's such a great writer, he was able to uh, turn it into one of the greatest uh, stories ever told. Uh, and we'll be getting back to that later on, this idea of uh, to what degree you need a great premise or not. But uh, let's take a break here. I'm going to sort of add color to this illustration, take it a little further along so that we'll be closer to the end of it by the time uh, we finish the video. But uh, hold on, and I'll be right back. Well, I think we've got enough of it done now that I can go ahead and uh, carry on to the last two pieces of advice, beginning with this one, number six. 
Are you yourself truly fascinated by the story premise uh, you've come up with? If not, you may need to start over with a different one. Um, because really the premise is the springboard of the launching pad, as I said, of your whole story. If you yourself, right at the beginning, are not particularly interested in uh, this premise you've come up with, you're really in trouble, you know, because the uh, that's getting you off to a very bad start. You really want to have the kind of fire in your belly of like, I'm, I myself find this whole thing fascinating, this idea. Uh, and, you know, the truth is if you, if you have a character that you've invented that, that you like, um, you could probably come up with any number of premises that will involve that character. Uh, so I would say just be aware of that warning sign if you find yourself starting the story and realize that the, the basic story idea, the premise, is not all that exciting to you. Maybe time to stop and, and rework that before you commit too much time uh, to the story that you may end up never finishing just because you don't have the uh, the energy. You weren't into it that much in terms of the, of the premise uh, from the start. And now we can uh, carry on to the very last one here, number seven. Sadly, a great premise doesn't guarantee a great story. But a talented writer can tell a great story even without a particularly original premise. Uh, this one, uh, all the time we see movies uh, or uh, read books that, um, you know, the premise was so good, but they just blew it. You know, <laughs> they didn't turn it into uh, something that was all that fascinating. And it was always very sad when that happens because you feel like, oh man, they had the, the basic idea, but they didn't uh, get the juice out of it that they should have, you know. So, um, Although I'd, I'd love it if coming up with a great premise guaranteed that you would have a great story. That is not the case. You still have to follow through on it and, and come up with the actual story that best takes advantage uh, of that premise. Um, but the good news is that if you are a talented writer, uh, you can tell a great story without a particularly original premise. Um, as I was saying before about um, Romeo and Juliet uh, or any number of uh, stories, um, you know, a lot of my favorite movies, it's hard to even summarize the premise because they don't come down to um, simple, easy to summarize uh, situations. Um, you know, like uh, I think about uh, Catcher in the Rye, for example. Uh, you know, the, the premise, you know, this <laughs> boy goes for a kind of weekend in new york city without a you know any plan you know and and we see this series of events that happen from that and it's one of the greatest books ever written but in terms of a premise i don't it's just not built so much on the premise it's the execution that really matters uh now i know that we can't be done with this illustration if i don't add blushies i think we call these panic blushies <laughs> when you see a ghost for the first time the blush, involuntary panic blushies. And because she's blue skinned as a ghost, I think she has blue blushies. In the afterlife, we end up with blue blushies, apparently. I thought I could also use this to add a bit of watery shading to this sweat drop. And that, my friends, brings us to the end of this video. Hang on, I'm going to go ahead and grab my books. So that I can say thank you to anyone who has supported me by getting them, like Brody's Ghost, the book that that uh, chibi drawing came from, and the drawing lesson, a graphic novel that teaches you how to draw, mastering manga, and my very latest book, Chibi, the official guide to drawing chibi characters. I really, uh, really can't say thank you often enough to people who support me by getting those books, but let's go ahead and lay down this pencil. I want to thank you all for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it, and I'll be back with another one real soon.